The CL-13B Mark VI is a fairly obscure bit of aviation history, but it flies out for Germany in War Thunder. Let's check it out. Throughout the 1950s, Canadair manufactured their own versions of the American F-86 Sabre under license from North American Aviation. The initial versions, marks 1 through 4, were very similar to their American counterparts, and in almost all respects, the performance was basically identical. The Mark V ended up being a significant revision to the basic design. It featured a redesigned wing and the Orenda 10 engine, which had better performance and combined with the new wing, presented a tangible performance increase over the earlier designs and the original F-86. The Mark VI, which was the final version, featured an upgraded Arenda 14 engine, compatibility with the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile, as well as a fair amount of upgraded electronic equipment. The Canadair Sabre saw extensive service with a dozen or so countries and would see some pretty heavy combat during the 1971 war between India and Pakistan. At the time, the CL-13 Mark VI was the primary air superiority fighter for Pakistan. And while it occasionally had trouble in dogfights against some of the smaller Indian aircraft, it fought well and achieved a favorable kill ratio thanks in part to use of the Sidewinder missiles. The CL-13 was also used by Jacqueline Cochran to set a woman's world speed record, and she became the first woman to break the speed of sound by taking her Canadair Sabre into a mild dive from high altitude. The plane was rapidly withdrawn from service starting in the mid-1970s, but was generally regarded as a success, with the Mark VI usually considered to be the ultimate development of the original F-86 design. The plane that we have in War Thunder is the CL-13B Sabre Mark VI. This is at rank 6 in the German air tree at a battle rating of 9.7. The plane features the AN-APG radar gun sight, which unfortunately is pretty useless in arcade and realistic battles, but sim players have reported finding it useful. There isn't any ballistics computer for attacking ground targets. The CL-13 gets six 50 caliber machine guns with a pretty basic selection of ammo belts. The total burst mass is only a little over 5 kilograms, and in practice you usually need a fair amount of time on target to bring things down. But you have a pretty generous uh, amount of ammunition, so that's not nothing. The external loadouts include three options for unguided rockets, two bombs, or a pair of sidewinders. The sidewinders you get are the basic entry-level AIM-9B. Given that this jet is at battle rating 9.7, and you can be up against, like, Magic 1s and R60s, the AIM-9B isn't super competitive, but if you're careful with your shots, you can still get kills with it. It has a caged seeker and only a 10G maneuvering limit, so you basically only want to fire at targets that are directly in front of you, flying directly away from you, within 2 or 3 kilometers at most. Now the flight performance of this plane is pretty decent. Due to its upgraded engine, this is the fastest version of the Sabre, and has a small speed advantage over most similar subsonic fighters. The plane has a bit of a reputation for experiencing bad wing rip problems, but it's easy to solve just by unequipping the hydraulic boosters. I never installed them, and I haven't had any wing rip problems at all with this plane. The roll performance and overall maneuverability of the CL-13 is excellent at medium and high speeds. If you're careful, it can retain energy very well in sustained fights. Taking this one out into combat kind of comes down to whether or not you get up-tiered by the matchmaker. At BR 9.7, this is 
a subsonic jet with light machine guns and two caged seeker missiles that gets paired into Mach 2 fighters, Magic 1 missiles, and enemies with countermeasures. If you get a down tier, it's a much more fair fight, and the CL-13's great dogfight performance will allow you to be highly competitive in air combat. If you get up tiered, well, defensive flying is going to be very important, and if you don't have an upgraded pilot, you might find yourself constantly blacked out from the sustained 10G turns trying to evade missiles and dogfight at the same time. This plane is really punished for its battle rating by the matchmaker, but you can often surprise people with it. The CL-13 was a pretty minor aircraft historically, and I'm willing to bet most War Thunder players only know of it as the AI planes that serve as target practice in the jet tiers. You can use this to your advantage, and if you're able to suck in less maneuverable fighters and pull them into close combat dogfights, the only thing that's going to hold you back is how wimpy the machine guns are. Personally, I have a really hard time bringing down targets at this BR with light machine guns in a plane like this, because things just move so quickly, and there's often only time for like half a second of snapshot. But with a plane like this, sometimes you need to pump the target for a couple of seconds before doing enough damage to send it down. If you've got a good aim with the guns though, it might be a bit easier for you than it is for me. The potential for close air support is limited, but it can still be effective. The pair of thousand pound bombs can do a good job of clearing out capture points or blowing up even the heaviest of tanks. It just might take a little practice to land the hits since you don't get a ballistics computer or anything. The unguided rockets are incredibly difficult to use since they're spaced so far out over the wings and the point of impact is different with every shot, even when they don't diverge. And they will diverge. So, if you're going to be doing ground attack, I would personally suggest using the bombs. Visually, the CL-13 looks just like a Sabre. Because it is. It's a generally good-looking plane with very clean lines, but this one doesn't get any custom skins or anything. The only paint job you get is a variant on the JG-71 unit pattern, which isn't bad looking, but it's the only one that you get. Landing the plane is pretty easy, with caveats. Its good low speed performance makes it simple to come in low and slow, but your gear will rip at around 340 kilometers, so you have to drop gear and flaps pretty slow. Also, no drag shoot, so lock up the brakes after you touch down because it's all you've got. Now the cockpit, like all Sabres, gives excellent all-around visibility. This is a dogfighter cockpit through and through. My only gripe is that the instruments aren't visually distinctive enough. They're all exactly the same size and shape, just set up in a couple of rows, and you have to spend more time memorizing their locations than with some other fighters. To close up on the Candidair CL-13B Mark VI. This plane has outstanding maneuverability and dogfight performance, a generous supply of ammo for its guns, and it can carry a pair of sidewinders. However, it has a reputation for wing rip problems, even if I didn't run into them myself, the sidewinders it gets are AIM-9Bs, and it's punished really hard by the matchmaker. The final verdict on this plane is that it's a fun dogfighter, and if you can get people into close-in engagements, you'll have a good time with it. But it's a victim of BR compression, and this plane is completely outclassed by more than half of its potential opponents. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.